Was it Ian? Good morning, church. My name is Ian, and I'll be introducing our speaker for today. Thanksgiving had just passed, and it wasn't the festive, it wasn't that festive as the Thanksgiving we've had in the previous years. This Thanksgiving was celebrated in mute silence. My mom didn't make an effort to cook the turkey, so there was no turkey for me. Speaking of turkeys, we're not the only ones complaining about the lackluster Thanksgiving this year. Snoopy, a character from Peanuts, was complaining as well. On this Thanksgiving dinner, <clears throat> he just had dog food. Snoopy looked at his bowl and said, that isn't fair. The rest of the world today is eating turkey with all the trimmings, and all I get is dog food. Because I'm a dog, all I get is dog food. He stared at his food for a while and said, I guess it could be worse. I could be the turkey. Cheer up, guys. Like Snoopy, let's stop complaining about the missing turkey, the fun fair, and or this raging pandemic, because it could be worse. We could be the turkey. Let's listen now to Pastor Greg as he reminds us to learn how to be thankful for what we have. Welcome again, Pastor Greg. Uh, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, learning to be thankful in extraordinary times. Uh, let me share screen and uh, this uh, evening. We will talk about learning to be thankful in extraordinary times. Once again, I would like to express gratitude for inviting me again uh, to speak in your church. Every time uh, people ask me, uh, where will you be speaking this weekend? I tell them I'm going to Canada and they're always surprised by that kind of an answer. And uh, I truly enjoy looking at their faces when I tell them that I'm going to speak uh, in Canada. So thank you for inviting me. Uh, my friend, uh, your speaker last Sunday, uh, Pastor Steve Merpuri, uh, told me that he shared from Colossians chapter 2, 6 and 7, and uh, this was also confirmed by your leaders that uh, he did not include the passage that we will be discussing tonight. And therefore, uh, this morning rather, <laughs> therefore, uh, allow me to share this passage from Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7, a very familiar passage, but since we are in a situation that brings so many anxiety attacks, we need to be reminded of this passage. Now, what are these extraordinary times? Uh, the brother of Roland, uh, Bong or Rudy Newell Jr., uh, works with Unilab. And as a senior officer of that company, they normally have people to talk to them about how they could better plan for the future. And uh, Brother Bong shared with me that one of the things that they are discussing nowadays in uh, management is that we are all living in a VUCA world. Now, what is VUCA world? VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So when we think about VUCA, volatile, primarily it is the rate of change. Before, if you are 
let's say, producing a product, it would take around 15 to 20 years before that particular product changes. But now, because of the digital nature of our uh, era, there is this average product life cycle of merely one to five years. So the more volatile the world is, the more faster things change. That's why uh, people are so stressed uh, because uh, of the volatility of our uh, world. Second, of course, we are familiar with uncertainty. We are so unclear about the present and how can we prepare for the future if even the present is very unclear. We don't have the information that could help us make wise decisions. Even companies nowadays, uh, not only of course companies, parents, families, individuals have difficulty planning for 2022. Some, when they look at their calendars, it is empty. They don't know what to write on their calendars because of the uncertainty of tomorrow. Not only that, the complexity of our world. Uh, we know that uh, we need information uh, so that we could make wise decisions. And when we talk about complexity, there is this interconnectivity of many things that causes us to think how can all these connections matter as I make the decision. So the multiple key decision factors causes us to be in a complex world. And of course, lastly, would be ambiguity. Many things become so unclear, that is why it also affects what would happen uh, in the next few weeks, few months, and even the years to come. Let me just cite one example. My brother-in-law is coming over from the US because from the Philippines, he traveled to New York so he can fix some of the documents of his daughter. They lived in New York for 12 years, but because he, he doesn't want uh, to raise up his daughter uh, in an environment like New York, he decided to come home to the Philippines and establish a dialysis center here. But upon checking on their documents, he needs to go to the U.S. to uh, perhaps uh, update some of their uh, documents, especially for his daughter. Now, uh, leaving the Philippines September, we were advised that he needs to book for a hotel in advance that the moment he comes home to the Philippines, there is this 10-day quarantine mandatory for all travelers coming from the USA. And while he was there in the US, we received again another uh, advisory telling that he can only be quarantined for five days. And on the fifth day, you get your RT-PCR. So if you get negative, you can continue your quarantine at home. And then recently, we received again another news that there is no more quarantine for countries coming from uh, what they call the green countries. And uh, recently, we had people coming home because of some uh, uh, family reasons. Uh, one of those came from Abu Dhabi. And we realized that Abu Dhabi is a yellow country. That's why upon arrival, he was requested to stay five days in the hotel. Then on the fifth day, 
he gets his RT-PCR. And because of that, hopefully, he would be released on the sixth day. So in this month, so many things happened. Uh, there are so many changes, so many different rules, so many different policies. That's why even as a church, we cannot plan whether we will do face-to-face -face worship as well. Uh, there was a time we did face-to-face -face worship, but after a week, we need to cancel it and return to digital worship like what you are doing. So because of the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity of our time, all of us are truly affected. Now, with, with this kind of an environment, we end up experiencing anxiety. Now, uh, earlier during our worship celebration, uh, we had what we call a technical difficulty. Our speaker uh, went to the province and spoke from the province, hoping that he would have a strong internet. But sad to say, in the midst of his uh, preaching, he was cut. Therefore, I need to come into the picture to preach. It is good that uh, I had this message prepared for you tonight. So I was able to preach this message this morning uh, because uh, of technical challenge uh, during this uh, uh, digital ministry. So uh, it is very difficult when we experience these things. As read earlier, our scripture reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 6 to 7. I will not read it again. Our desire would be, how do we live in a VUCA world? The main idea would be, let us learn to be thankful for his presence and his peace. Let us learn to be thankful for his presence and his peace. So let's first talk about learning to be thankful for his presence. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So when we think about uh, the command, be anxious for nothing, it means to have an anxious concern based on apprehension about a possible danger or misfortune. Now, the church in Philippi was commanded by the Apostle Paul not to be anxious about anything and everything because... Uh, Perhaps he noticed that they were concerned about his situation as a missionary. They were concerned about the false teachers that abound. They were concerned about the leadership factions that uh, they were noticing. Even the Apostle Paul wrote that there should be unity among uh, those uh, serving, especially in the leadership. That is why. The Apostle Paul said, do not be anxious for nothing. Now, to be anxious, when we think about this word, uh, it is a disorder that causes nervousness, fear, apprehension, and worry. So anxiety, it becomes a problem if it affects our eating, our health, our sleeping, on overall, our quality of life. Some of us, like uh, perhaps me, uh, it affects our eating. Uh, we call that stress eating. Uh, we enjoy food whenever we are anxious. Some cannot eat. Uh, some sleep and uh, continuously sleep, even though it is already. Uh, the, the day is already high, uh, they still are in bed. 
some uh, could not barely sleep. So try to think, how does anxiety affect you? Now, during quarantine, it has been noticed that there is what we call quarantine fatigue. I envy all of you that you already had your face-to-face -face retreat and camps. So that was a good experience indeed. Now, here in the Philippines, we have uh, changed our uh, quarantine levels instead of enhanced community quarantine, uh, instead of general community quarantine. We are now using level four, level three, level two, and level one. So everybody is already tired of the word quarantine. Now, when we think about this, uh, the effects would be exhaustion, detachment from others, anxiety, irritability, insomnia, poor concentration, indecisiveness, deterioration of work performance, reluctance to work, or even consideration of resignation. Again, uh, talking about the company of uh, Bong Yumul, uh, they observed that they had a, an increase uh, in medical orders as far as mental health medicines are concerned. For so many struggle with anxiety attacks and depression. So there is high demand on the medicines that deals with anxiety attacks and depression. So we are commanded in the Bible, not to be anxious about anything. So whatever fills our mind that causes you to be nervous, fearful, or worried, that is included in this command. Now, the cause of anxiety is basically a distrust of God. Now, there is a direct connection of the antidote to anxiety to prayer. That is why we see that there is this in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Now, this summarizes the types of prayer mentioned. First, prayer is simply to speak to God. We are taught by the Apostle Paul to pray unceasingly. So, if we want to deal with our anxieties, we can just talk to our creator God, the maker of heaven and earth, and just release anything that bothers our mind. That is a lifestyle of talking with God. But there's difference between prayer and supplication. Supplication is basically to plead, to beg, that which is asked with urgency based on presumed need. So uh, not all crisis, not all uh, problems, not all uh, difficulties are in the same package. Some indeed uh, demands us to plead before God, to ask for his mercy, to ask for his grace, to ask for his compassion that he may look upon with favor on what we are asking for, and that is supplication. And then thirdly, uh, we pray, we do supplication, and then thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is to express gratitude for benefits or blessing. We all have learned that when we thank God for the blessings already received, it is gratitude. But when we thank God for blessings that we anticipate God would give us, then that is an expression of faith. So three types of prayer would be prayer, supplication, and uh, thanksgiving. The principle that we have would be whenever we are anxious, learn to be thankful in his presence. Now, let me share with you a testimony shared to us by an, uh, one of our board of mission uh, leaders. This is not my story. 
This is his story through me. Several decades ago, I read a testimony of a Christian who suffered so much. The author described him as to have received a bouquet of suffering. I never knew that such would be a reality to me until I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2008 and my beloved mother in 2012 and she eventually died 2016. Then in October 2017, I found that my breast cancer metastasized in the lungs. My two sisters were diagnosed of the same cancer, the second in 2018 and the youngest just last year. The photo was taken in January 2021. Uh, it was my youngest sister's first cycle of six chemotherapy sessions and my first of the sixth chemo drug. Presently, I'm on my seventh. Isn't it amazing how God orchestrated for us to have the same schedule for chemo session? Both of my sisters are taking adjuvant treatment at present, oral medication. Many times, I pleaded to God to stop. And yet, my God, who always does what is good for me, deemed it best to handcraft a bouquet of suffering. Despite the fears of the unknown, I rest in the fact that I know the God I love and worship. My discipler shared to me her life verse several years ago, and it has become one of mine too. It has been one of the verses that continue to minister to me. In Jeremiah 9, 23-24, it says, Thus says the Lord, Let not a wise man boast of his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts, boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. I am assured that he is sovereign and loving and faithful. These past four years, God handcrafted several bouquets of sufferings customized for my bents, personalities, blind spots, so that I will experience the reality of Christ's presence and the transforming power of His Word in my life. When I needed 200000 a month for 13 months, He provided lovingly. Until now, He never fails to provide for all my needs. When I feel pain, he made me feel a fraction of his own suffering to redeem me. His presence refreshes me. When mouth sores made it difficult even to open my mouth to talk, he heard my silent prayers in tears. He wiped them dry and responded to my cries for help. My appearance changed, my skin turns dark, my hair falls, but even then, he reminds me that he chose me not because of how I look. I continue to be the apple of his eyes. He loves me unconditionally, warts and all. When my taste becomes weird for three days in a week, just like right now, he makes me remember the stock knowledge I have from my previous work in a flavor company. So wonderful is he that I knew he let me have the skill to sustain me during these times. When my brain becomes foggy after chemo, he stands as my wisdom. In times of physical weakness and sleeplessness, he is literally my strength and rest. My God who never slumbers watches over me when I'm tired yet wide awake. When my emotions run low, and thoughts wander. He lifts me up through his songs. He takes my thoughts captive to obey him. He holds my frail body all together. He never failed me, ever. He sustains me in his overflowing grace. 
He teaches me how it is to literally depend solely on Him. For apart from Him, I can never really do anything. It is by accepting my bouquet of suffering as a gift that I realize how much and how deeply He loves me. He used my weaknesses to keep me from relying on my strengths, skills, and talents as if they were my own. All those came from Him anyway. He knew my propensity for independence. I proclaim with Paul um, what he wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest in me. Without the bouquet, I could be popped up. I would not have enjoyed the special presence of our indescribable gift that only those who are weak like me can identify with. The giver of my bouquet of suffering is both my creator and my redeemer. He stands strong as my hero and my shepherd. He is for me. This is his story. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Neri, for that powerful testimony. Uh, a bouquet of suffering, yet she acknowledged that in the midst of all those weaknesses, she has encountered more of who God is. Now, my wife had her share of being diagnosed with cancer as well. Uh, that's why we also have learned thanksgiving as a means wherein we see God at work. These are the names of our God that has become so personal in our lives. We thank God for He is our Jehovah Jireh, for He was the one who saw our need even before the health crisis took hold of my wife Grace and faithfully provided for all our needs. We thank God for He is our Jehovah Rophe, the one who healed grace. The early detection of the cancer cell at 1.3 centimeter was a great blessing. It did not affect the 28 lymph nodes. We thank God for He is our Jehovah Nisi, who gave us victory over this battle with cancer. He gave us victory over this battle with our thoughts as we struggle it in our minds. We thank God for he is our Jehovah M. Kadesh who sanctifies us. We are truly in shock upon hearing of the news. We went through our moments of struggle, but we have learned to surrender. And then, only then that God has worked to sanctify us, to make us usable vessels, holy for the master's use. We thank God for he is our Jehovah Chidkenu, who is our righteousness. By faith in Jesus, we are declared righteous. By confessing our sins, we are cleansed from our unrighteousness. By walking in the path of righteousness, in the power of the Holy Spirit, as revealed in the word, we experience daily righteousness. We thank God for He is our Jehovah Rohi, who is our shepherd, who guides, leads, counsels, and watch over us. Truly, our hearts are filled with thanksgiving, for we have known Him better and deeper. We saw God at work in a very personal way. That is why especially during moments of anxiety, let us not miss the opportunity to get to know who God is. So how do we apply this message? How do we handle the stress in this volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world? If ever you are 
filled and overwhelmed with anxiety with your health, work, children's concern, their studies, uh, even in the ministry. I was talking to Roland earlier that you will be making a critical decision whether you would take the place, the, the one that you would want to lease, or uh, just uh, trust the Lord that when the time comes that you will have face to face, he will provide. May God's wisdom indeed be upon all of you. Convert your worries into prayer, pleading and thanksgiving. And I believe he would truly uh, guide your decisions. You would get to know him more and more. Now, second, we would think about learning to be thankful for his peace. The Bible says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. We can only experience the peace of God when we pray. Let us believe God's word. If you want to overcome anxiety, you and I need to pray. Let us learn to exchange our fears and anxiety into prayer requests and claim his peace. Now, for some definitions, as far as each phrase is concerned, when we talk about peace of God, it is freedom from worry. It is a state of freedom from anxiety and inner turmoil. When we talk about surpassing all comprehension, it surpasses in value, even as far as our reasoning is concerned, our ability to understand, reason, think, and decide. We cannot understand, we cannot comprehend. It is beyond us, the peace that he gives all of us. And what will it do? It will guard our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. It will watch over our inner self. It will guard uh, our uh, inner self. Uh, it will guard our heart. It will guard our mind, even our thinking and reasoning. Now, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 33, that do not worry then, saying, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly father knows that you need all this. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all this will be provided for you. Now where do we get this peace? Jesus promises, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled nor let it be fearful. Also in John chapter 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Now when people ask me, what is your definition of abundant and meaningful life that God has promised through Jesus Christ. One thing that I try to emphasize is that abundant and meaningful life is Jesus. He is our Emmanuel. He is the one present in our lives. And when he is present, yes, we may not be exempted from trials, troubles, and difficulties, but because he is present, his peace also abounds. Now, our principle would be, whenever we are anxious, learn to be thankful in his, uh, for his peace. Now, not only uh, for his presence, but also for his peace. Now, I would like to stop share at this time and ask Ray Yumol to share with us his story. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ at FCC. 
uh, I I choose to be thankful because God is good. Thank you for this opportunity that I can also share my testimony, my God story regarding Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Truly, we are indeed on a tough situation, but we all know that uh, the famous uh, saying, uh, toughness brings the toughest, tough situations in our lives. And we continue to increase our faith. And God gave us this opportunity to really be close to him, to our network of relationships, and develop our character, the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, today, I will share to really learning to thank God for his peace. Biblical peace is not something I can create on, our, on my own. It is a fruit of the spirit. It is the inner peace, the peace of mind, the seren serenity and calmness from the author of our faith, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The question for me is God under control of my life? Why so I am anxious and why so I am worried a lot? As Pastor Greg has mentioned, these are, we call the, the aggressive adversaries that, are, that our foe is using in order for us to get our eyes off our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight, I would like to share to you my journey in the faith. First of all, we and I have so many reasons to thank for no? the, the, the time I'm here. I'm really be thankful and grateful for this opportunity to be encouraged by your FCC family. And I hope you will be encouraged in my God's story. Last April 25, I'm supposedly flying to the United States to finally meet with my family. Koyala and uh, Pastor Greg and Ate Aida knows that I have been really months years away from my family. And seeing them is really a great blessing to me, though I see them virtually, but face-to-face -face is really what I really desire uh, in my life. I know God prepared everything and allowed me finally to purchase my ticket to the United States. That was April 25. As a policy for us dito sa Pilipinas, visiting United States, we have to avail of our RT-PCR test before the said flight. Three days before, we have to be tested for us really to be cleared at the airport. So with all the excitement and confidence that my result will be negative, should I say, because we all know God desires all good things sa kanyang mga anak. So I think uh, April 24, uh, around 10 p.m., I finally received an email from my test. Upon viewing my email, alas, I tested positive for COVID. Wow. When I read that, read that email, I was shocked. And sabi ko nga, bagsak balikat ko, and I really cried. Knowing that news, meaning I have to postpone my trip, I have to be quarantined for almost 21 days for a month and be with Mr. COVID for the following days. I started to call my mentors, my kuya, Pastor Greg, and share to them, should I say that great news? I know God has plans for me, and I know God has delays, purpose for this, for these delays. They prayed for me and inspired me through the word of God. They quoted Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious for anything, Ray. But by prayer and thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The same night, brothers and sisters, I was at peace with my situation. I remember King David in Psalm chapter 3 when he was really being pursued by his son, no other his son, Absalom. 
he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord gave him the gift of sleep and the gift of waking up this every morning. It was that peace that transcends all understanding that indeed guarded my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And almost a month, so I, test, I got tested again and the Lord answered my prayer. I tested negative and finally last May 25, I did travel to the United States and be with my family. I know God has its purpose for my delay and that peace that transcends all understanding will continue to reign in my heart. As I come to God every day, I am being reminded of the essential habits that our mentors has been telling us. I've been consistently doing my prayer time, quiet time, consistently reading God's word, because I know God wants me to know him more. God wants me to grow in my challenges and trials. And God wants me to share my faith to individuals God has given me. He will provide what I need each day, our needs each day by brothers and sisters, the strength, the help, and God's comfort, comforting, empowering, and upholding his presence and the peace that transcends all understanding will continue to guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So thank you very much for this wonderful time that I can share learning really to thank God for the peace that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you very much, Ray, for uh, sharing with us uh, this uh, testimony. And uh, again, uh, to wrap up our uh, message today, uh, let me just uh, share uh, our, our last few slides. Uh, this would be... Uh, Whenever we are faced with anxiety attacks in this VUCA world, we are advised or commanded rather by the Apostle Paul, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Now, let us try to internalize this uh, message. I saw this and I think this is very much applicable uh, in our time. Please read slowly. If you have food in your fridge, clothes in your body, a roof over your head, a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of the entire world. If you have money in your wallet, and can go anywhere you want, you are among 18% of the world's most wealthy people. If you are alive today and healthy, you are more blessed than the millions of people who will not survive this week and die. If you can actually read and understand this message, you are more fortunate than the three billion people in the world who are blind, deaf, or illiterate. Life is not about complaining. Life is about a thousand of reasons to be grateful and happy. I saw this from uh, gotquestions.org. Uh, this is basically a song uh, that wraps up our passage in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, sometimes he calms the storm with a whispered, peace be still. He can settle any sea, but it doesn't mean he will. 
sometimes he holds us close and lets the wind wave go wild. Sometimes he calms the storm and other times he calms his child. Let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, in this time where we are faced with the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguous world that we are living, so many have struggles with mental health particularly with anxiety and depression. But for us who are in Christ Jesus, you have given us a way to overcome it. We may have memorized this verse already, and it is our prayer, O oh God, that we will not only know this verse intellectually, but rather we would experience more and more the truth of this verse, especially learning to be thankful of your presence and learning to be thankful for your peace. Seal these words in our hearts, for this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for the privilege of sharing God's word.